What's up guys, it's the Carp here, back again with another episode of the AC Malign career mode. Uh, if you missed the last episode, go check it out. We brought in one more signing in Cornet, uh, and we are going to need him because Niang also got injured for eight weeks, uh, unfortunately. But on the bright side, we did win our first two games of the Serie A, including a win against Napoli away. Uh, so it was a very good start to the Serie A season. After a, uh, a disappointing 4-1 loss to Juventus in the uh, the Super Cup, Super Copa. Um, so yeah, uh, I realized that I actually got a little bit of extra funds uh, heading into the end of the transfer win window. So I am going to try and bring in Grimaldo here. Uh, there's not really any other players in the left back position that I'm interested in. I'm going to offer 12 million to start. Uh, I don't have a scout report on him, so I'm not sure uh, how much he's actually worth right now. But he's definitely a player I'm interested in bringing in. Um, <clears throat> I also threw in an offer for Thiago Silva. Uh, we don't really need another center back, but if I could bring in Thiago Silva, you know, used to play for AC Milan, uh, left the same time as Ibra. Uh, I don't think they're going to accept it, though. It was, you know, yeah, I didn't really expect us to be able to afford him. Uh, and I wasn't willing to pay too much for him anyways. Uh, but Grimaldo, uh, they want $21.5 million. I'm going to go... 17 million for him, and actually I'm gonna offer uh, because we have two left backs. Oh, see, I'm tempted to offer Deshilio. He's 23 years old. He's not. Um, I mean, he can play right back as well as left back, but he's only 77 rated. I'm gonna offer 14 million and Deshilio, and see if they uh, accept that, because we don't really need three left backs in the club at once. Uh, you know, three good left backs, that is, and they're all, you know, 70, you know, they're, they would all be gold players in the ultimate team, which is just too high to have three players in the same position uh, of that quality. So, are we going to be able to get him for that? We are uh, 14 million euros and DeShiglio, and his wages are very small, 15,000 a week, so definitely want to bring him in. He's going to be an important first team player for us. Uh, this could be a pretty big signing. Um... We could use a left back. Uh, obviously, eventually we're going to need a better right back as well, and probably you know two better center backs. But at the, for the time being, those are the positions I'm fine with. Uh, but Antonelli, you know, he's pretty old, and we don't have another you know fairly young uh, left back to replace him. So uh, Grimaldo, you know, he's young and he's going to be a good player. So he's not going to accept that. Uh, but will he accept to double that in 30000 a week, which is still uh, not that much. I'm definitely willing to go uh, that high in wages for him. Not sure what uh, what rating he is in this, but uh, he should have the potential to be a great player, I would imagine. Um, so is he going to accept that? He is. There we go. Grimaldo is now an AC Milan player. Very nice stuff. 20 years old. What rating is he, though? Uh, that is the question. So I'm going to go into here. And he is 78 rated. Okay, so he's the same rating as Antonelli, but he is, uh, you know, only 20 years old. So he's going to go onto the bench for Storari and then into the lineup for Antonelli. Uh, and Antonelli will be on the bench. And Niang, like I said last episode, got injured. Uh, but we do have Cornet to replace him. And then I think, uh... Okay, we've got Delphi on the bench. All right, so yeah, that's uh, that'll do. Uh, Niang, you know, he's only only 21 years old. It's really unfortunate uh, for him to be out for eight weeks. Uh, you know, at that age, uh, it's you know it's a really key like time for him to develop as a player. Uh, but something we're gonna have to deal with. Still got a strong squad. I would I would like to say. Um, I mean, Cornet only 75 rated, but hopefully he can uh, do something special. Hopefully he can reach some form. And, uh, and fill that gap left by uh, Niang's injury. But I'm still feeling confident. I mean, we uh, we won our first two games of the season, and um, we've uh, you know Napoli was one of those games. Napoli away, a very tough fixture. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish off the transfer window here. So there we go. We made three signings throughout the transfer window. I would say uh, three very good signings. Um, and we still got a little bit of money left over if we need it for anything else. Uh, we got our first monthly squad report for our youth squad. And, okay, so only one of those players went, t uh, you know, low enough to be dropped. So, this guy is 79 to 94. He's 16 already, so I could sign him up to the squad, but I'm going to wait a little bit longer. They're all 16, actually, so I could sign each one of them to the squad. 
uh, but I'm going to wait for all of them. Um, two center mids and a right mid. Okay, so decent stuff. Uh, some exciting players there. Uh, but we do have more players that we can bring in to the youth squad here. Uh, but we're not going to be bringing in any from that batch from Spain. Are there going to be any good ones from Italy? Not yet. Still nothing. Wow, that was atrocious. Uh, a terrible monthly scouting reports from my uh, my two scouts. But yeah, we, so we still got uh, 25 million here uh, and you know a decent amount of wages. But I'm gonna save that in case uh, you know it's you know in case in case I need to bring someone in in January. I don't want to make all the transfers at once in summer. You know, don't want to completely change the squad around. We brought in three, which I'd say is a good number, and then uh, we'll bring in more if needed in the January window. <coughs> Now, there are a couple of players out on international duty, so I'm going to wait and see if I can get them back um, in time to uh, train them. Oh, fuck, I missed out on that week's training, goddammit. Uh, oh, well. Not sure if the players are back from international break anyways, but uh, there we go. Got that training session done. It's only done around my even. Uh, look at Telly wasn't out on international duty. So, a bit of a mess up there, but uh, whatever. We'll be all right. Got uh, Udinese at home next. Udinese, another team that could be challenging for that Champions League spot, uh, but they're not as good as Napoli, who we beat last episode away. So hopefully we can beat them at home. I'm definitely expecting a win here, but uh, you know anything can happen. This is FIFA after all. But we have scored three minutes into his debut. Grimaldo has got a goal from left back. Couldn't have asked for a better debut. And Bonaventura with his third goal in three Serie A games, which is just incredible. Uh, Coombs uh, pulled one back, but then Isco, one of our signings, has scored from midfield to make it 3-1. That's one of the reasons I brought him in. Bonaventura with a second goal. He's now got four goals in three games. Absolutely ridiculous. And a 4-1 win there. And this is a very good start to the season. I mean, after that 4-1 loss to Juventus, in the first game, the first competitive game of the season, I was pretty worried, uh, but now we've won three on the balance, three pretty convincing victories. I mean, a 1-0, a 2-1, uh, a I believe it was, and then a 4-1 against fairly tough opposition. Um, you know, obviously Udinese, Champions League contenders, Napoli, title contenders, and then uh, Torino challenging for that Europa League spot. So now we have a game away against Sampdoria, the weakest opponents we've played so far. Uh, but it is an away game, so it's going to be kind of difficult, I would imagine. Uh, Isco got his goal, his, his first goal for the club last game. Hopefully, Bonamaturi can keep his uh, goal-scoring form continuing uh, this game. Uh, and he has done 12 minutes in, and Bonamaturi is just banging goals in. This is ridiculous. Um, that's his fifth goal in four games as a center mid. Uh, and that is just amazing. Baca hasn't even scored this season, and uh, Kuchka has got on the score sheet uh, again from the center mid position, and our midfielders are just carrying us right now. Uh, and it's looking like that's how it's going to finish. Yeah, 2-0, uh, a very good result away from home, and, you know, again, both of our midfielders with the goals. I mean, I would, I would, like, I'm disappointed in Baca because, you know, he's not scored yet this season, but at the same time, I mean, if our midfielders are scoring goals, you know, Baca doesn't need to. Uh, maybe he's getting assists. Who knows? Um, but yeah, like that's that is a great start. Is that uh, that's so we, we're actually top of the league right now uh, with four games in. Uh, Inter and Juventus both dropping points from a draw, maybe against each other. Uh, not too sure about that. But we've got Lazio and Fiorentina next, and uh, the Serie A is actually it's a pretty difficult league. Uh, if you look individually, each team like Lazio. Fiorentina, Udinese, all those teams could challenge for the Champions League spot. Uh, Napoli challenging with the title, Torino challenging for the Europa League, you know, and then Sassuolo, they could be challenged for, challenging for the Europa League too. Juventus, obviously, title contenders. You know, there's lots of strong teams in this league. Uh, people say that the Serie A isn't, isn't as good as it used to be. I would I would argue with that. I think Serie, the Serie A is a very strong league. Uh, now, yes, Juventus does win it, you know, every year, um, the way things are going, but... If you look past Juventus, you know, the, the whole rest of the league is, uh, you know, it's a lot less, you know, con concrete. Like, uh, anything could happen past that. But that's the team we're going to go with. The same team again, because, you know, I'm happy with the way they're performing. Uh, and we are at home against Lazio, meaning we're probably away against Fiorentina. So these are both going to be tough games. 
but we are the favorites in this one, I would say. Can Bonaventura score again? I'm going to say, I'm going to guess no. Uh, I'm going to, you know, I say that this is going to be the game that he uh, ends his streak. He can't keep it going forever. Um, but uh, he has been impressive so far. There's no saying he won't score, but uh, I think this one's going to be a little bit tougher for him. 60 minutes played now, still no no, and he is, he's proved me wrong and scored another goal. Five consecutive games with a goal for Bonaventura, and it looks like it's going to be the only goal of the game. It is 1-0 win against Lazio. Very boring game, you know, just a yellow card and a goal, nothing else happening. But Bonaventura continuing his incredible start to the season. Five games played, he's got six goals. Uh, Perisic actually just behind him, you know, both of them midfielders, both of them doing very well. Uh, but they're both ahead of, you know, Dybala and Pelosi, who are both strikers. Um, yeah, and that's five wins on the bounce. Uh, and it doesn't matter that Bach is not scoring, because we don't need him at this rate. Um, yeah, Bonaventura, just whew, incredible. Uh, couldn't have asked for a better start to the season. But we do have Fiorentina away now. Uh, and this is going to be the last game of the episode. Uh, but Abate uh, has picked up a couple of yellow cards, I guess. So this is going to be the first game that he doesn't start. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, he wasn't our captain, or he, he was our captain before that. Uh, but um, he's in he's in good form as well. But we're gonna put. Uh, I think I'm gonna try Antonelli there. Can he actually play right back? Uh, okay, so he can't technically play right back based off of that. But I'm gonna try him there and see what he can do. Um, the whole rest of the team is in decent form. Rob Magnoli with that straight up arrow as well. Uh, decent fitness as well, considering we just played a game. Uh, Baca though, he still hasn't scored. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep playing him. I'm not, cause you know our second choice isn't the strongest. So I'm gonna give him, I'm gonna give him one more game. If he doesn't score this game, I'm gonna drop him for a game, uh, a game or two. But uh, I'm gonna give him one more chance. I mean, as long as we're winning games, I'm fine. But if we can like, if we can have Bonaventura score in every game as well as a striker score in every game, you know, we're set for the whole season. But uh, this is probably. Our, our second toughest game of the, the league so far. Uh, but they are in bad form, Fiorentina. So hopefully we can pick up a win here. Uh, and keep our uh, you know our perfect start to the season going. Isco with his second goal of the season. 16 minutes in. Very nice stuff from him. I'm expecting him to continue to do this the whole season. He's a great player. Um, you know He's a great goal-scoring midfielder as well. 55 minutes played now. No goal for Bonaventura yet. Could this be the game that he ends his streak? It might be. We do still have the lead, though. Until now, it's 1-1, and that is the end of the game. So, if Bonaventura had scored, we would have kept our win streak going. But, again, he couldn't he couldn't keep that goal-scoring streak going forever. Uh, and 1-1 is not a bad result against Fiorentina. I mean, they were in bad form, so I probably would have, you know, preferred... You know, obviously, I would have preferred the win. But uh, we're still top of the league. If Juventus win their game in hand, they'll go joint top with us. But still an amazing start to the season. I'm happy with it. Um, leave a like if you guys are enjoying the series, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, and I will see you guys next time.